But welcome to Actionable Intelligence. I'm Eric Greitens. I'm honored to be with you tonight. And as you know, this is the show that respects your intelligence. We honor you as a citizen. And today we're talking with Jenna Ellis, Senior Legal Advisor for Trump 2020. Jenna, thank you for joining us. Um, as you know, we've got an outstanding group of common sense, intelligent viewers. A lot of them have been following the election and all of the legal proceedings very closely. Please, if you could, uh, give our viewers an update on where things stand today. A quick rundown of the new evidence that's emerging and also an update on the legal strategy as it's playing out in battleground states around the country. Yeah, well, first, Eric, thank you so much for having me on and giving yeah. me the opportunity to provide this really important update. And I appreciate all of the viewers that are watching right now who are not paying attention to the fake news, who just want to, uh, you know, perpetuate all of the drama and they want to call Joe Biden the president elect when uh, that's not the case and that's not what's happening. And so uh, these lawsuits from the Trump campaign and what we're seeing, uh, it's very real. It is very actionable legally. And so from a broad perspective, um, what has happened, of course, is that we've seen all of these irregularities, all of this outright fraud and uh, all of uh, you know these problems in the various states. And so we have taken action over the last two weeks to simply try to get the states to not certify false results. Everyone should agree, no matter who you voted for as president, that every vote should count legally and every vote that is illegal should not count. And so we should come to a fair and accurate result because that's what our process is. And so uh, the Democrats are just rushing to try to certify the results and uh, they are not wanting to even recognize that legal challenges happen all of the time. And so, uh, you know, we remember the 2000 election when uh, when George W. Bush, of course, contested that. And if people recall, he actually lost every step of the way uh, through the Florida Supreme Court. It wasn't until the U.S. Supreme Court actually looked at the federal constitutional questions, uh, appropriately applied the law to the facts, uh, did not act in any way political, and that ultimately changed the outcome. And so uh, what we're doing here is wanting to put forward all of our evidence um, and actually get to that day in court. Right now, we have only been contending with those initial preliminary injunctions. That's the legal term to basically say we you're asking the court to stop the certification. That is not an evidentiary hearing. That's not where we're presenting all this evidence. So for the people out there who are asking, why is this taking so long? Where's the evidence? The process can take some time. We're only two weeks in, but also we have not gotten yet to those evidentiary hearings where we will put forward witnesses, we have affidavits, we have sworn statements, we have video, we have all of this that we can bring forward to show that, uh, especially in Pennsylvania and Michigan uh, in particular, and then also Nevada, of course, um, <clears throat> all of these states where we have filed have of significant irregularities and significant numbers of votes that the court needs to recognize uh, this did not happen according to the legal process. Yeah, and we've certainly seen, you know, the evidence is coming out. The mainstream media keeps wanting to say that there's no evidence of fraud. And in fact, on this program, we've talked about the affidavits that have come out in Michigan from people, you know, many people who've alleged widespread fraud in sworn statements. Uh, I think for a lot of our viewers who are watching what's happening in Georgia, where they've come up with thousands of ballots that weren't counted, and those groups of ballots actually favored uh, favored the president. Well, we're going to continue to make sure that we stay on top of all of the evidence um, as it comes out. Uh, let's talk a little bit about how this might work in detail moving forward. And so if you would, Jenna, you're, you're also, uh, in addition to being a legal advisor to the president, you're also an author, a constitutional law expert. Let, let's talk a little bit about how this might work from a constitutional perspective. So, so tell me if I get anything wrong here, but to win the presidential election, as, as all of our viewers know, a candidate has to get 270 electoral college votes. Now, if a candidate doesn't receive 270 electoral college votes, then the election is gonna go to the House of Representatives. Uh, but in the House, not every representative gets one vote. What happens there, as I understand it, Jenna, is that each state gets one vote. 
Now, there are more Republican states than there are Democrat states, so one would assume that this would favor President Trump. Jenna, first of all, do I have that process right if it ends up going down that, that road? Yes, you do. And that's why uh, the U.S. Constitution provides for uh, these election integrity safeguards, because uh, if you actually read Federalist 68 by Alexander Hamilton, who, of course, was one of the three founder lawyers uh, who advocated for ratification constitution in its initial form and federalist 68 uh, explains his argument for how we select a president through the electoral college system we're not a, a direct democracy and even though the vote matters and that's how the people initially um, express their opinion and the cast of their vote uh, for the president then we have to make Make sure to protect that. And if there is corruption, if there's foreign influence, if there's anything that uh, is irredeemably compromised in that vote, then there are safeguards. And that's why the Constitution provides that the state legislatures are, of course, over uh, the state election law. And ultimately, they choose uh, the manner in which the electoral college delegates are selected. So if there is a problem within the state, and for example, if a state can't certify a vote, they have the option of holding a special election, uh, doing that brand new. We've had that happen a few times in our nation's history. Or the state legislatures can also select the slate of delegates. But you're right. If um, neither candidate gets to 270, and as you know, some candidates, of course, President Trump and Joe Biden were not the only candidates uh, that were running in the November election. If no candidate gets to 270 under the Constitution, yes, it goes to the U.S. House of Representatives, their state delegations get one vote. And the reason that this is not disenfranchising people, you see a lot in mainstream media saying, well, what about the people's voice and vote? Well, they also expressed their voice and vote when they selected their representatives. That's why the House of Representatives matters, because they are supposed to be the voice of the people. So it's a way and a mechanism actually to protect the vote and make sure that the people are not disenfranchised. So our founders were actually brilliant in providing a lot of these safeguards and mechanisms through the Electoral College to make sure that we the people get to select and prefer who our leader is and we don't just rush someone in there through fraud or corruption. Absolutely. And, and Hamilton, uh, who, who wrote uh, that paper in The Federalist, of course, was involved in the election of 1800, which was, was the first election that actually went to, to the House of Representatives. Um, as some of our viewers know, he ended up being involved in a duel with Aaron Burr. We certainly hope that uh, things don't come to that here in the year 2020. <laughs> but, but Jenna, if, if these lawsuits are, are successful, uh, the, the lawsuits that, that are currently going on, and you guys are contesting this in a lot of battlegrounds, States, then it might be the case that neither candidate would get to 270 electoral votes. Is that uh, a potential you know, uh, strategy or a potential outcome as we look at what's, what's happening today? It's a possibility. Um, it's certainly not a strategy. Our mm -hmm. strategy and our legal strategy has always been to make sure to count every legal vote yes. fairly and accurately. And if we can't get to a fair and accurate count, then the court needs to provide a remedy or the state legislatures. Mm -hmm. um, and we have to do that constitutionally. And so what happens uh, when we actually get to that point, there are several different alternatives that we've discussed. And so then it's up to the state legislatures and then ultimately the judicial branch to apply the Constitution and the law correctly to make sure that uh, we get to the selection of the next president through the constitutional system. So what we're driving for, of course, and our ultimate goal is to make sure that election integrity is preserved. And we are convinced by looking at the evidence that we do have, that if every legal vote is counted and counted fairly, President Trump won this election. Uh, it's just a matter now of going through the court process, which of course can take a little bit of time, but we're doing it on an expedited basis. Awesome. Well, we appreciate as you're going through this, we are greatly appreciative of you, of you making the time uh, to, to come here and share with our viewers at Real America's Voice what is happening and what you're seeing. It's a perspective that simply isn't being properly covered by the mainstream media. Folks, that's Jenna Ellis, Senior Legal Advisor to the Trump 2020 campaign. She's also an author and a constitutional law scholar. Always good to have her with us. And we will be right back with more just after this.